Hi, I'm Amanda. I'm 42 years old and I've got three children, which means that right now I'm actually a year eight school teacher, a year three school teacher and a year three, two school teacher. Um, so hence I'm turning slightly grey and less blonde than I was a couple of months ago. Um, I just wanted to do this video um, by way of really reaching out and I suppose sharing the load um, of what a lot of us are experiencing right now um you know for those of you out there that are the same as me you know mother to perhaps one or more children trying to navigate your way through this homeschooling um dealing with whatever other things might be going on so you know family members that are needing extra support and help perhaps are poorly or are isolated um perhaps worries about finances because you're not earning or your your partner's not earning or you know any of those things I think at the moment it's just really important for us to just share really the load and, and to reach out to each other so that's why I'm doing this video so before all of this happened and I suppose I still am now but um I feel like a school teacher right now I was a training consultant um, working for a performance consultancy and going in with um, big clients to run leadership programs, to do one-to-one -one coaching and to run team building events and, and different things like that. Um, so I do have some knowledge of, you know, dealing with building resilience and, you know, facing setbacks and stuff like that, which I think is helping me. A little bit through these times although like everything it's much easier said than than done so we're we're always still learning and growing um at the moment i've i'm furloughed um which i guess puts me in a an advantageous situation compared to some people who are trying to full-time work and homeschool their children um and my husband is also furloughed and um, i say with a smile because obviously that brings another different dynamic to our family and, and the way we operate some of which is brilliant I'm um, having him around a lot more having dinners and food, meals together is fantastic but it's just a different dynamic which you know sometimes can be challenging for all of us um I guess what I wanted to do is just share a few tips that I've found have helped me over the last couple of months um well, well I don't know is it months we're losing track of time, aren't we? Um, you know, weeks uh, leading into months um, that have helped me to, I suppose, just keep my spirits up. You know, I think we all recognise that it's just a real strange wave of emotions. One one minute you feel positive and you feel like, yeah, I've got this, you know, we can do this. There's actually loads and loads of benefits in this, you know, and being grateful for what you've got. And then the next you feel a bit hopeless and not being able to see the light at the end of the tunnel and the boredom sits in and all that kind of stuff so I just thought I'd I'd share here three tips really um three things that I've done anyway that have helped me that may help you too um and before I do that I also want to say that I'm also a school governor I I guess I'm maybe more informed about the homeschooling situation and therefore I don't have to worry as much and I feel like I'd like to pass that on you know, it's really important that we keep our children doing things just to keep them their their brains stimulated. You know, reading is the most important thing we can get them to do. Um, and I think most children do benefit from structure and routine, so I think that does help. Um, but as far as trying to replace your teachers, that's absolutely not what anybody expects you to do. Um, like I said, I have three children in three different year groups. It's just not possible. Um, so... You know, it's just getting them to do some something to keep their brain stimulated, but also to make sure you keep their body moving and, and physical activity going as well. The teachers will catch them up. They will be able to cover what they didn't cover when they go back in some way, shape or form. Um, that's what they're trained and skilled to do. So we shouldn't we shouldn't beat ourselves up about that. So let me move into sharing my three tips for how to get through this and how to keep yourself feeling good and your resilience up. So my first thing is do something for someone else. 
whether that's drop off some food, whether that's send a card, whether that's make some PPE, whatever it might be, whatever you can do within the restrictions you have, making someone else happy makes you feel happier. It makes us feel happy. So, you know, it's a really kind thing to do. And it's also a selfish thing to do because actually we get the kickback from it as well. It feels good to do something to make somebody else happier or in a better situation. So that's something I've done, you know, quite a lot of. So whether it be reaching out on Facebook pages, whether it be about trying to create more connections, whether it be dropping food off to people who can't get out to get their food, uh, whether it be just, you know, sending a, a message and reaching out and, and connecting with somebody that you might feel is isolated more than others um but i know when i've done things i've definitely had that boost afterwards and felt happy so that's my first tip do something for somebody else my second one is become really self-aware and recognize what you're like when you're at your best you know what do other people see how do you show up i suppose when you're at your best but also be aware of what happens when you're at your worst and know that it's okay we all have bad days um, you know, and maybe if we recognise it, then maybe sometimes we can help ourselves out of it, you know, or we can at least go, look, we know we're feeling like this, maybe we just need to just do some things that we know will make us feel better, whether that be have a soak in the bath or read a book for an hour or watch some box sets or, you know, whatever it is that you find that you need to do, but recognise when you're not at your best, acknowledge it and say it's okay and think about what could you do to maybe make yourself feel better um you know what are the things we do when we're at our best because they often are helping us stay at our best so that's my second top tip and my third is to just focus on what you can control you know at the end of the day whether that's planning for your financial future you know thinking about how do you make less go further if you've been furloughed or if you think the future might mean that between your household you're going to have less money you know or it might be thinking about what do we want to take from this time that's been really really beneficial to us as a family into whatever happens in the future so that might be making sure that we do sit down and have dinner several times a week and we sit and chat or it might be we do play board games or you know, it's just about planning and being in control of what you can control instead of thinking and worrying about all of the millions of things at the moment that are around us that we have absolutely no influence or power over at all. Yeah, it feels good to be in control of something. So if you if you can spend your energy and your time on something positive, you know, and, and really controlling something you can do something about then that will make you feel better so three top tips number one do something to make someone else happy or do something for somebody else full stop number two be aware of what you're like at your worst and your best so that when you're at your worst you can recognize it accept it and think about how you can come out the other side and number three focus on only what you can do things about okay Put yourself in control. It feels good to be in control. Much better than worrying about all of the other stuff that's going on right now that we can do nothing about. So I hope that helps. You know, and as I said, this is just about reaching out. There are a million people out there who are just like me. There are millions of people who are worse off than me. There are millions of people who are probably not in anywhere near the same sort of situation as I am. And that's OK. You know, this is just me. I suppose doing those things on there you know and trying to reach out okay take care for now and I'll see you again soon bye